Welcome back. Let's take a look now at this amazing breakthrough in the United States. It's nuclear power without the radioactive waste that hangs around for hundreds of years. It could be the answer to our energy needs. For the first time, a fusion experiment has created more energy than it actually used. Basically, it's the power of the sun and it's been reproduced in an American laboratory. It's the first time it has ever been done in a laboratory, anywhere in the world. Simply put, this is one of the most impressive scientific feats of the 21st century. Now, how to break this down for us, and it is truly significant, I'm hoping he's going to put it in a way that you and I can both understand and explain how Australia can get in on the act, is Dr Warren McKenzie. He's the managing director of Aussie firm HB11 Energy. Warren, it's great to have you on the show. Now, you've described this as a moon landing moment. Just how significant is this for the energy industry in this country? Well, in, in a... In a time where we're aware of climate change and limited resources in energy, it's probably the biggest scientific breakthrough of the century. And to me, it's always been this fabled myth we can have nuclear fusion and it would be reliable, limitless energy. It now appears to have come true. How does it actually work? And can it really produce unlimited clean energy? Uh, yes, it can produce unlimited clean energy with the caveat that uh, some of the isotopes that are needed r rely on, in, in the case of the NIF result, they rely on tritium that needs to be bred from lithium and, and obviously that's a finite resource, particularly if we're making batteries out of it. So we should give up making lithium batteries and throw it, save our lithium for uh, nuclear fusion of the future? <laughs> well, po possibly in the, case of, in the case of deuterium tritium fusion, which yeah. is what most people are, are pursuing. HB11 is a little bit different because we're using boron. Mm. Someone described this as you know, kind of like Archimedes lever or the, the perpetual energy machine. Um, it is groundbreaking technology. How long before you could see it commercialised? I mean, this is a tiny amount of energy produced, but the principle is absolutely vital, isn't it? That you could replicate it on a much bigger scale? Well, um, my, my opinion on the time scale is there is always a joke that fusion is 30 years away and will always be 30 years away. But in the case of deuterium tritium fusion, where you're using radioactive fuels, they produce neutrons, which are harmful, so they need to be heavily regulated. It's nearly impossible to do an experiment. And when it, you, know, you only get a few shots on a laser, for instance, every, every year, of course it's going to take you 30 years. Um, if, for instance, the world put the attention into fusion that they did for the development of, of the COVID vaccine, I believe it could be done very, very soon and certainly well within a decade. Wow. And what about Australia's role in this? I mean, you're working to kickstart the industry in Australia. Tell us about what you're planning and what your company's doing. I might go back a little bit further sure. than our company. Um, an Australian, Sir Mark Oliphant, discovered fusion. That's a very, very significant finding. He also discovered hydrogen boron fusion. Um, since then, Australia did have some very, very uh, significant contributions to the research field of fusion. Now, they slowed down when the nuclear ban uh, got imposed because it became a, a lot, lot more difficult to do that. But in any case, our co-founder, Professor Heinrich Hora, has been a pioneer of this subset of the fusion industry uh, called laser fusion. And that's the same approach that we saw in, in, from the National Ignition Facility uh, this week. Yeah, I had the great pleasure of uh, having dinner, a lunch as a very young man at school, a boy, I should say, with Sir Mark Oliphant. He was a wow. governor of uh, South Australia at the time and just an eminent, uh, an eminent Australian who's played a, a huge role. So I'm pleased to know that he's actually behind that. I should have remembered it from school. What's the government doing to, to back you, your company, back this sort of technology in? Well, um, in our case, I mean, we're Australia's first private fusion company. There's now about 30 private fusion companies in the world. Um, they've, they've collected the best part, part of $7 million in private investment, of which more than half has been in the last two years. In our case, you know, we're a relatively new startup company. Uh, we've done a few private rounds, but in addition to that, we have had some generous support, largely through the Trailblazer programs uh, that, that were announced around about the election campaign. That's going to allow us to establish a fuel lab at Deakin University with some of the world's experts in boron fabrication. But also just here in Adelaide, we have some of the world's experts in laser engineering. Uh, and just overnight, or, or la last night, uh, we assembled a consortium of some of the world leaders, leaders in fusion energy, in including the Institute of Laser Energetics in Osaka, 
in, pre in attendance was Donna Strickland, the Nobel Prize winner, who won the Nobel Prize for the laser technology that has unlocked fusion energy. So we've assembled a consortium essentially to establish a laser industry in Australia. So how long before you're ready to replicate the proven experiment of last night in this country? Oh, we've got, we do have some way to go. Yeah. That said, HB11 has become the first private fusion company to dem demonstrate a significant number of fusion reactions in an experiment. So of all of the 30 fusion companies that are out there, only either none or, or minimal amounts of fusion have been generated. Now, to be fair for us, we're using hydrogen boron fusion. It's far safer than the others, so we have a lower regulatory hurdle to, to get over to, to do an experiment. But uh, there absolutely is some way to go before uh, we're certainly building a, a fusion reactor. Um, what the pathway is most likely to look like, uh, and, and this is a pathway that has been outlined uh, by the US government, is uh, SpaceX-style public-private partnerships. So rather than NASA being the sole, the sole uh, motivation behind an Apollo mission, uh, the government would co-fund uh, a private company to, to, to meet a, a very uh, ambitious milestone, such mm -hmm. as commercial fusion energy. Uh, and, and that's what's motivating not just a lot of companies, but a lot of the, the research and, and establishment of new companies. It's fantastic. It's a huge opportunity. You're at the forefront of it. I'm excited about this. I know nothing about the science, really, but uh, I can only imagine how internally you must be going crazy that this is actually working for all of us. So, Dr Warren McKenzie, thank you very much for your time tonight. I really appreciate you joining me on Credline. Pleasure. Thanks for having me.